Thomas Clark, otherwise known as Experiment 1199, was an employee for Playtime Company, who had first been hired in 1955. After being diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, he had willingly taken part in Playtime Co.'s experiments to transfer his body into a brawn toy. Thomas Clark was a middle-aged full-time Playtime Company employee from 1955 up until the date of the experiment. Six months prior, Clark was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, leading to his willingness to volunteer for the experiment. The experiment was that of the Bigger Bodies initiatives and concerned the local Playtime Company mascot, Braun. After volunteering for the experiment, he was accepted in as the subject. After the transferring had concluded, Thomas woke up in a small, broken Braun toy. Tests discovered he showed much more disorientation than the other experiments. Video showed Thomas worriedly moving his eyes around in horror. Due to this, methods of temptation were cut in half. After being put in the same room that the other experiments were kept in, the other experiments began to realise he was different and worked for the company that ultimately had ruined their lives. Thomas looked around the room at the other experiments, some toys big, others small like him. After staring into the eyes of a fellow experiment, whom, of which was fused with PJ, the large experiment he saw to his right grabs him and his vision blackens. The research team later discovered Thomas's bloodied body lying in the middle of the room on his side. His internal organs had been severely damaged, with the entirety of his larynx and thyroid completely gone and devoured. They rushed him into surgery for stabilisation, which took approximately 12 hours. After the surgery was complete, the team decided to keep him in a small containment cell away from the other experiments to ensure safety. It is unclear what role Thomas Clark will play, but it solidifies the horror surrounding the Bigger Bodies initiative. Although it was initially theorised that Playtime Co. were using adopted children for experiments, it would also seem they were using terminally ill volunteers too, presumably offering a second chance at life. Unknowingly, however, this led to a hellish nightmare indeed. 